Hey guys, so I wanted to do a part two. I have a video that I am actually presently uploading and it's called Narcissist Obsessed with Church. Here's why. And um, so as I did that first one, then it was just kind of laid in my heart to do this part two. Now, the first one I spoke about why people who literally live a completely opposite life love going to church there are people who they don't go to church they know that they're sinners or they may not see themselves as sinners or they just don't believe in god whatever their thing is they just don't go but there's another group of people that are always in church and outside of that they're very they can be evil sometimey flip conditional evil mean wicked just they think evil things they're very uh, opportunistic so um but they're in the church and truly what it is the spirit just hides in the church they it's they cloak themselves in religious foliage all right and um they're not true and i did talk to you about how easy it is for narcissists to enter just say hey i want to be a part of this ministry i want to be a part of this of this auxiliary and it's very easy for them to get in now something that i do want to talk about when we're talking about mega churches now that could be easy to do like in smaller churches and things of, of that nature but when you're talking about perhaps the mega churches the same things applies that i spoke about in the previous video whether it's a mega church or small church on a whole it's this behavior as to why People that behave this way, they just want to be in church, whether small or big. Now, as far as being a part of an auxiliary, it might be a bit harder and not as easy to get in when you're talking about mega churches and things of that nature. But the process and the reason why that is, is because the mega churches have a lot more to lose. So if you're going to work on their auxiliary, more than likely, they are going to do background checks if you're working with children um, and certain things of that nature because they want to make sure that they keep the brand of the church, the image intact, and they can't afford any sort of lawsuits or, or anything of that nature. So it may be a lot more red tape to get into their organizations for many different reasons. Um, one thing that the Lord is just revealing to me is that a lot of times when people are in this organization and, and in the larger churches, when you are on in an auxiliary, there's certain, uh, I want to say disclaimers. There may be some gag orders in some cases, uh, non-disclosure agreements, things of that nature. And they have to meet a certain sort of, there's a criteria that they have to meet. But all of those things that all it takes to get into the auxiliaries and to get into certain organizations or to yeah organizations and departments, it's still not based on God. Okay, there is obvious that yes, you do need to be believe in the Lord. There may be things like that. They you must agree that you're going to pay tithes and offering. If you want to be on certain auxiliaries, you are going to say that I'm going to tithes, give offerings. All of those things, guys, is all about the outer man, okay? But not so much the spirit. Yes, you can confess to believe in God. I mean, demons say Jesus, but are they truly going to hold you to living a holy life? No. But what will happen is, depending on your auxiliary and how close you are to the pastor, their whole thing was they may know that you're in sin and they may know that you're doing certain things wrong, but their whole thing is, you do what you want to do, but the minute it gets out or if I get it, it's going to make the church look bad or the ministry, we're going to cut you loose. So fix that situation before I got to fix it for you or before it gets out, because I am going to completely alienate myself, distance myself and the ministry from you and that situation. You will get fired. You're going to get cut from this group. It's just that simple. So there are agreements and things that are made. So there are people, it gets back to, again, narcissists. It's about the image. People, some people love going to mega churches because they want to be able to say, I go to church with this, you know, pastor so-and-so is my pastor. I go to church with this 
famous person, this celebrity goes to my church, the mayor goes to my church, this person goes to my church, this famous person came to my church to um, to to speak, you see. So it's all about ego and the narcissist, which I said in this in this case, narcissist is a is a title that we all recognize, but truly at the, in the spiritual realm, there is no narcissist. It's an unclean spirit that is normally birthed from trauma, sin, hurt, rejection, all these different things within a person. They choose to hold on to that bitterness, that anger. They 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 tell themselves, they declare to themselves what they're not going to be, what they're not going to do. And so they go and they build an empire, go to school, get their education or whatever they may do. Some don't go to school, but they have this hustle. They do well. They're good at their business savvy and they build themselves up, but their character is still lacking. And so that's why you find these individuals, no matter how grand the platform that they're on, they have very nasty ways. But the thing about it is the higher they go, they have so many layers of protection around them. People who just worship them that you can't see it. Or if you see it, they're going to go into damage control and you're going to be the bad person. So in order to get into these auxiliaries, you're going to have to meet a certain criteria. And a lot of them, they're looking for... Um, they're looking, you have to have a certain look in some places, in some cases, all right? They want you to have a certain, they may even look at your background, your education for you to end up being on the auxiliary. So you think of people who may have passed all of that. They're getting on this auxiliary. They realize they had to go through an extensive background check. They checked out with education, checked out with looks, checked out with all of that, even though they don't say looks outwardly. Um, publicly, they're not going to do that, but you meet all the criteria and now you are considered now to be one of the elites. You're on their praise team. You're one of their musicians. You're on the auxiliary. A lot of things that they also look for, they're, they're looking at your financial standing. They may even run your credit just to see what you have going on because they're picking people based on worldly standards that's what's happening in a lot of these churches so they draw the narcissist who has the perfect uh income the they on paper they're fine they have this prestigious job connections all of that perfect background check credit score maybe they they passed and so that's another stroke to their ego. I'm good enough to be a musician in this church. I am found worthy enough to be a part of the pastor's aid. I am a bishop, a deacon. Well, I'm a deacon. I am an elder. I am, I am a, I am over the, what do they call in the really big churches? They'll have people that they'll assign to groups. So they break down the churches in small groups. They all go to church, but as far as maybe some other things to keep up with who's who, they have people that they'll dispatch out and they'll have, say, so many people, it may be a couple, whatever, or, you know, an individual, they'll feel good to be a part of the ministry and being set over this group. And so they will begin to feel like they are elites. I am falling under the leadership of this wonderful pastor, their family, they're super rich, and I am an extension of them. And so you find how the 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 Bible talks about in Matthew 28, how, I'm sorry, Matthew 23, how the Pharisees and scribes, they will go and find a proselytes and proselytes are people who they don't believe in God or anything. And they convert them, then bring them in. And then what they do is they begin to groom them and make them into you know, a worse child of hell than they are. That's what it says in Matthew 23. So you find that the leadership is, uh, in the, you know, is, has a, they talk about God and everything, but they're very vain. They're very prideful. They're very standoffish and they're truly not following the Lord. The people that they groom underneath them basically is going to have that same type of attitude because it's like, you know, if you watch the nature shows, you have the great big whale and then there are these little tiny fishes and not fishes. There's no such word as fishes, guys. It's fish. If they're, if it's more than one, it's fish. It's not fishes. All right. So you see all these little things and parasites, they'll call them that just hangs on, 
to that great big well and just get carried anywhere and they get some protection and and so on they're just sucking all the little algae and little things off of them and so that's what happens so you find people that's in the church and they're in the leadership group and leadership team and they're very prideful they can be very prideful because they they have been basically validated I passed all the, I met all the criteria and here I am and they're taught ways that they should conduct themselves, what they say, don't say, all of that, what they should or should not be talking about, especially the closer that they are around the pastor, the leaders, the more restricted and and the more rules and regulations they're going to be for them. So it's easy for these individuals maybe to go home and be self-righteous to their own families, be a certain way because I'm ex- look at this person thought I was good enough. You may not you all may say that you want to point out who I'm not here at home, but at the church, I'm this person. When I'm around this person, I'm this person. I play on a great band. I am the praise team leader. I am the band leader. I play with this great band. I am the pastor's aide. I travel with the pastor, you see. And so it's easy for that spirit to to just spread and to just become a great big virus in the brain and the mind of these individuals because it does not deal with your character even though it may be harder for you to get on auxiliaries in these ministries it's still about what can you do what do you have to offer what is your credentials it's just like getting a job they're going to check you out make sure you're good And that's it. Now, granted, there's certain natural talents and abilities that's needed. For example, if you want to be security, they're probably going to get someone that's maybe an ex-police officer, ex-military. They know this stuff because you just can't have anybody be in security. But what I'm saying is they're checking out your worldly accomplishment. And if you meet the standard more so than the spirit man. So therefore, those who have this behavior, they can go in and hide in the church and not necessarily that they're hiding, but they they run away from who they are and uh, they'll believe that they can just make a deal with God. They, They run away from their nature. They run away from who they are on the inside because truly just as the bible says in Matthew Matthew 23 they are dead they look like they are whitewashed tombs on the outside but inside they are dead men's bones so sometimes people believe a lot of people that behave in this way in what you would call a narcissist they're wicked they do mean things they are conditional they lie they cheat they they're nice, but then they have an their own motive. They're jealous in the heart. They, they're deceptive. They are very, they always have a gray area going on with them. A lot of times what they will try to do is they are, every human being is aware of when they are doing wrong. Every human being is aware of sin because there's a conviction. We all have a conscience. So sometimes what they do, they try to run away from that. But if I'm in the church and I'm singing and I'm playing and I'm doing things and I'm a good person, they want to serve God on their terms. And sometimes they don't want to serve God at all, but they'll blind themselves by doing what they want to say, good works. But because People will praise them that they they buy some new equipment. They they bless the pastor with this. They do this. They do that. They drive a nice car. They look good. Someone is always going to compliment them on their outfits and things of that nature. But if they're in there, they they feel better about themselves if they are in the church and they are doing church stuff. But the thing about it is that they do works. They serve him with their lips, but he's not in their hearts. They're not willing to change their behaviors. They're not willing to face those demons within. They're not willing to say that they're sorry. They're not willing to take a look at themselves. They're not willing to hear the concerns of those around them. No, I just want to go to church. I want to go to this place where I can get about an hour or so of accolades and feel good and play to my heart's content and watch everybody be so amazed at my talents and my abilities and my singing and all of this and hang around the pastor and go eat. They get their fix 
of just being elated and that euphoric feeling of I'm important, I have relevance. Even if they're not up front, guys, if they go to church, they may put themselves well. They like how people look at them. They like the compliments. People will say, oh, you're always sharp. You're always looking good. You're Where did you get that? They, they eat that up. They feel so good about who they are because a lot of times they're just on display. Look at how I am. Look at how beautiful I am. I go to church with this important person. I go to church with that important person. Look where I sit. That's the other thing. You know, you if you pay a certain amount of money in some churches, you can get special seating. So look at me. People will in, intentionally go to church late so that they can just walk in and go to their special seat and put their special pretty designer bag down and all of that in their hair and whatever. Or they make sure they sit where that brother is that they're attracted to or sitting near the sister okay and all of this stuff and it's it's a game so I am not saying guys you must understand that I'm not saying that there are no churches out there that are good but there's a lot of them that are not they have lost their way they have gotten caught up they have gotten caught up in the world and and trying to do things the world way they have the world's wares in the house of God they are they're they've they brought a strange fire into the house of God that is not God and a lot of people some people are never called they just started church as a business and other people the Lord called them but they when the Lord starts to move and the gifts of God begin to 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 stir up within them they can get prideful it can happen guys it's it can definitely happen and so what happens is these individuals you some someone asked me why is it that people that do such evil they're always at the church because there's a lot of fuel there for a person who is known as a narcissist, they want to go somewhere where there's a lot of vulnerable people. They want to go to the place where someone's going to believe their stop, stop story and no one's going to check it out. They can go in and lie. They can make things up. They can say that there's something that they're not. Very rarely are they checking your background on certain things. Now, in the bigger churches, if you want to do certain things, yes, you may need to prove that you are qualified in this area, but they still cannot really track an embellished story. And so a lot of people can embellish and lie and go to church and say this and that about themselves. They can, they may never know the pastor, but it's a big enough church that they can go in there and hide and pick off the weak. They know who sits there. They know who goes in their section. They're in row H. And so they know, they get familiar with who's over there. And they can be over there just picking people off. See who's who's a nice old lady. Who's a nice older man. Who is looks like they're, 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 they're itching for partnership. They can figure all that out and be wreaking havoc right there in the church. And then they can disappear when they're done. A lot of things about, a lot of times these narcissists, at, or unclean spirits, what it is, these people that behave this way, they can go in the church, the bigger the church, the more damage they can do and leave undetected. And then and then what they do, find another church and start the, the, the story all over again. And the same thing happens, guys. The, the, the thing is, a lot of times people, they... The other thing, correction, is they want to go into the big church and get attached to whoever and they're, they they feel so important because of all the, they they met all the checks, they met all the criterias and, and they're, the, they're part of the elite. And that's how that separation can happen in the church that I'm different from you. I'm a part of this auxiliary. I'm a part of that auxiliary. I'm just, I'll see who I can talk to for you. And so... The focus is always on the outer man. What do you have? What can you bring? What can you do for me? How can you be an asset to the ministry? What do you look like? How do you sound? But then at the core of it all, the character, the, 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 the spirit man is a mess. And so, yes, the narcissist will go to the church for that high. That unclean spirit will hide right in there. Singing, dancing, all of that. Why not? 
demons are fallen angels that's come down and there was rejoicing and singing in heaven. So they like that. Oh, we can talk about God all we want, but we know in our heart that we can say God, 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 but our heart's not there. It's a, it's a, it's a big entertainment and you can see it when you go to these places. You feel like you're at the club sometimes. You feel like you're at a, at a rock concert. You feel like you're at a R&B concert because it's the same it's the same spirit the reason why you recognize it is because it's the same spirit in the tr- in the church relabeled rebranded and sold on clearance in the house of god now you think about it somebody bought something it was intended for somebody else and then they gave it to you oh this is for you oh yeah this this bracelet i bought it for somebody else but yeah i'm just gonna you know give it to you instead. Mm, depending on the type of person you are, I don't want nobody else's bracelet. I don't want anybody else's jewelry. It was for another person and then you're you, and now you're done with her, so you're going to you took it back from her and you're giving it to me? No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. So, uh guys, it's the same thing. But deception, they'll try to tell you something different. But this is not what this message is about. Narcissists go to church because you can get your ego stroked a lot there. You can get involved with a lot of things. You can get to know people who are empath, uh, em- who are empaths, who are very sympathetic. You can tell your story about what happened to you and do all of that. And then these individuals will go there and perform. Um, many churches, the spirit of the Lord is not there, has departed. So therefore the messages of conviction, repentance, changing, turn around, uncovering sin, uh, pouring out and letting go of the old, that's not going to be discussed. So the person is perfectly fine going there. So that's how you find a lot of churches. There are people who go to church all the time but they're still living very worldly, carnal lives because there's no conviction there. They hear a, a song that will get them emotional, but then you can listen to any song that's a worldly song and make you emotional. It has nothing to do with your heart. You're just, it's an emotion. You can cry and it's not going to change you. You see? So, I mean, you can cry at a funeral. You can cry when you're happy. You can cry watching a movie. You can cry watching a commercial about, you know, St. Jude patients. So crying is kind of subjective. So crying does not necessarily meet the heart. Someone could cry and watch a St. Jude video. Uh, thing and never and do not St. Jude infomercial or ad but they not gonna it does not mean that they're going to that they're going to sign up or contribute you cry in a movie but you're going to turn it off <laughs> and watch another movie so when people cry that doesn't mean much it does not mean it's necessarily hitting the heart and God sees that so people can be in church and doing a lot of different things. The, 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 the person who behaves this way, they can go there and they could cry. But then what happens is they're not surrendered. They are compartmentalized. This is the crying, praising part of me. And then now when they get done with that, they'll still go home and be the disrespectful, inconsiderate, always late employee that they've always been. The lying, cheating, I'm in your husband DM, I'm in your wife's DM, I'm mistreating the children, I'm not going to pay child support because it's you, I'm going to be abusive to you because you're black, I don't like you because you're white, I hate people because that's another part of them. And so that's why they can behave that way when they leave because they don't allow God to touch anything because they're not yielding to him. So just so you guys understand why so many, and then when you get close to them, you realize that this person is not who they say that they were, but always take revelation as, as a, as a treasure and a gift that God is showing you this for your own protection and your safety and your sanity to protect your vision, to protect what's being birthed in you. 
And a lot of places where this happened, guys, sometimes the leadership is this way as well. Simply there to he is put he or she is put in that position to draw people in to abort to to abort to deliver stillborn visions that's it it, it you don't take all that why are you so y'all talking about god get with this get on this auxiliary do this do that chill out whatever get blind it's time for you uh-uh take off that discernment you must be blind with us in order to rock with us in order to flow with us you got to follow the the blind ministry come along to the simon says ministries and you'll be fine drop your mantle drop what god has given you drop the word we don't use the word up in here our bible what is that are you from the flintstones days we don't do pages up in here we do apps you see so things can begin to change guys and it comes from the top and the top is sent that individual is sent there with a purpose so people go to churches to or, or these people who behave this way the wicked they want to they want to shine they want to hide from who they are they know that they're horrible people but they 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 want to hide it they don't want to surrender. They want to hide. They want to cover it up. They want to shroud themselves in religion. They put on the, you know, the, yes, I'm a Christian today for now. They would have been a bat out of hell cussing out their husband and wife, did this, did that, just woke up out of somebody else's bed, hopped in, put on their religious front, do all this. They feel better about themselves because they sang, they belted out a song and people said, oh my goodness, praise God. And so they feel so good. They feel so good. And God, see, look what I did. I showed up. And once they're done, they go right back to that life of hell because they are compartmentalized. You know, the Bible tells us in Matthew 7, by their fruit, you shall know them. And sometimes it, I think for us, it seems too easy. Is that it? That's too easy. But if you look back at the people and the experiences that you've had, were not their fruit evident before you kept getting closer, before they singed off your eyebrows with that betrayal? Mm-hmm. So most of us, we can go back and say, you know what? I saw that. I ignored that. So understand that going to church is not going to be what's going to get you closer to God. It's commitment. It is obedience. It is submission. It is repentance. It is doing what is right. It's following the Lord, following the, the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of people that is not doing that. Church is the new couture. It is a new all couture. It's a fashion piece and people just put it on and go and use it. And when they get done, they take it off and they go on and do whatever they want to do. So that is why you'll find so many people who are wicked hiding in the church. And this is how it can be, whether it's a small church, a medium sized church or a mega church. All right, guys.